Hello everyone, this is Manoj English Coach. Welcome to Love English. And in today's video, I've got this book, which is How I Taught My Grandmother to Read and Other Stories by Sudha Murthy. So let's get started with the first story. When I was a girl of about 12, I used to stay in a village in North Karnataka with my grandparents. Those days, the transport system was not very good. So we used to get the morning paper only in the afternoon. The weekly magazine used to come one day late. All of us would wait eagerly for the bus, which used to come with the papers, weekly magazines and the post. At that time, Triveni was a popular writer in the Karnar language. She was a wonderful writer. Her style was easy to read and very convincing. Her stories usually dealt with complex psychological problems in the lives of ordinary people and were always very interesting. Unfortunately, for Kannada literature, she died very young. Even now, after 40 years, people continue to appreciate her novels. One of her novels called Kashi Yatre was appearing as a serial in the Kannada weekly Karambira then. It's the story of an old lady and her ardent desire to go to Kashi or Varanasi. Most Hindus believe that going to Kashi and worshipping Lord Vishweshwara is the ultimate punya. This old lady also believed in this and her struggle to go there was described in that novel. In the story, there was also a young orphan girl who falls in love but there was no money for the wedding. In the end, the old lady gives away all her savings without going to Kashi. She says, the happiness of this orphan girl is more important than worshipping Lord Vishweshwara at Kashi. My grandmother, Krishtaka, never went to school, so she could not read. Every Wednesday, the magazine would come and I would read the next episode of this story to her. During that time, she would forget all her work and listen with the greatest concentration. Later, she could repeat the entire text by heart. My grandmother too never went to Kashi and she identified herself with the novel's protagonist. So more than anybody else, she was the one most interesting in knowing what happened next in the story. I am used to insist that I read this serial out loud. After hearing what happened next in Kashi Yatre, she would join her friends at the temple courtyard where the children would also gather to play hide and seek. She would discuss the latest episode with her friends. At that time, I never understood why there was so much of debate about the story. Once I went for a wedding, with my cousins to the neighboring village. In those days, our wedding was a great event. We children enjoyed ourselves thoroughly. We would eat and play endlessly, saving the freedom because all the elders were busy. I went for a couple of days, but ended up staying there for a week. When I came back to my village, I saw my grandmother in tears. I was surprised for I had never seen her cry, even in the most difficult situations. What had happened? I was worried. Abba, is everything alright? Are you okay? I used to call her Abba, which means mother in the Kannada spoken in North Karnataka. She nodded but did not reply. I did not understand and forgot about her. In the night, after dinner, we were sleeping in the open terrace of the house. It was a summer night and there was a full moon. Abba came and sat next to me. Her affectionate hands touched my forehead. I realized she wanted to speak. I asked her, what's the matter? When I was a young girl, I lost my mother. There was nobody to look after and guide. My father was a busy man and got married again. In those days, people never considered education essential for girls, so I never went to school. I got married very young and had children. I became very busy. Later, I had grandchildren, 
and always felt so much happiness in cooking and feeding all of you at times i used to regret not going to school so i made sure that my children and grandchildren studied well i could not understand why my 62 year old grandmother was telling me a 12 year old the story of her life in the middle of the night but i knew i loved her immensely and there had to be some reason why she was talking to me i looked at her face it was unhappy and her eyes were filled with tears she was a good looking lady who was usually always smiling even today i cannot forget the worried expression on her face i leaned forward and held her hand ava don't cry what is the matter can i help you in any way yes i need your help you know when you were away karam veer came as usual i opened the magazine i saw the picture that accompanies the story of pashyatre and i could not understand anything that was written many times i rubbed my hands over the pages wishing they could understand what was written but i knew it was not possible if only i was educated enough i waited eagerly for you to return i felt you would come early and read for me i even thought of going to the village and asking you to read for me i could have asked somebody in this village but i was too embarrassed to do so i felt so very dependent and helpless we are well off but what is what use is money when i cannot be independent i did not know what to answer ava continued i have decided i want to learn the kannada alphabet from tomorrow onwards i will work very hard i will keep saraswati puja day during dasara as the deadline that day i should be able to read i saw the determination on her face yet i laughed at her abba at this age of 62 you want to learn alphabets all your hair are gray your hands are wrinkled you wear spectacles and you work so much in the kitchen childishly i made fun of the old lady but she just smiled for a good cause if you are determined you can overcome any obstacle i will work harder than anybody but i will do it for learning there is no age bar the next day onwards i started my tuition ava was a wonderful student the amount of homework she did was amazing she would read repeat write and recite i was her only teacher and she was my first student little did i know then that one day would become a teacher in computer science and teach hundreds of students the dasara festival came as usual secretly i bought kashi yatra which had been published as a novel by that time my grandmother called me to puja the place and made me sit down on a stool she gave me a gift of a frock material then she did something unusual she bent down and touched my feet i was surprised and taken aback elders never touch the feet of youngsters we have always touched the feet of god elders and teachers we consider that as a mark of respect it's a great tradition but today the reverse had happened this was not correct she said i'm touching the feet of a teacher not my granddaughter a teacher who taught me so well with so much of affection that i can read any novel confidently in such a short period now i am independent it's my duty to respect the teacher is it not written in our scriptures that a teacher should be respected irrespective of the gender and age i did return namaskar to her by touching her feet and gave my gift to my first student she opened it and read 
immediately the title Kashi Yatra by Triveni and the publisher's name. I knew then that my student had passed with flying colors. Thank you for attending this session. Do share and subscribe to this channel for more lessons like this. Check out other video lessons by clicking on the video.